Hello, and welcome to a quick Molluska slide update from Adama. In this brief video, we're going to cover an update on the latest changes to metaldehyde revocation dates and a reminder of field boundaries for those continuing to use this active ingredient. We'll then look at Adama's ferric phosphate with reference to the difference between this and the metaldehyde, the Zedro technology, and what characteristics this brings to pellet quality. We will then conclude with an overview of the key points for the Gusto Iron product. Let's begin with a revocation update for metaldehyde. As of September 2020, the revocation dates for metaldehyde have been revised to the following. For manufacturers, the sale and distribution of the pellet has a deadline of 31st of March 2021. For the onward sale of product by distribution, the disposal, storage and use of product, the final deadline is the 31st of March 2022. If you have implemented all available IPM, trap for slugs using layers mash baited traps and confirm thresholds are met, your next step is likely to use slug pellets. For those continuing to use metaldehyde up until the final revocation date, it is critical that you follow good practice and leave a 10 metre margin around field edges to protect birds and small mammals in addition to water courses. The start of the 10 metre boundary is classified by the edge of the cropped area shown here. This means the best advice is to avoid application of metaldehyde slug pellets in this 10 metre margin. You can see from this that a temporary grass strip is included as part of the cropped area, whereas the six metre permanent strip is not. This is key to note when considering where the boundary starts. This also includes 10 metres away from any uncropped islands in the centre of the field, in addition to maintaining adequate distance from the water course. Where thresholds remain high, it is worth considering application of ferric phosphate in the boundaries to mitigate any environmental risk. This may be an appropriate opportunity to consider using Adama's new ferric phosphate based pellet, Gusto Iron. To avoid confusion where products overlap, the metaldehyde will continue to be packed in purple bags while the ferric phosphate will be in white bags. The AI content of the two differs slightly from the metaldehyde being 3% and the gusto iron being a 2.94% anhydrous pellet. In addition to the differing bag colour, the gusto iron will also be packed in slightly larger 20 kilo bags compared to the 15 kilo as previously used. This larger size enables a suitable 4 hectare area to be covered per bag when applied at the recommended rate of 5 kilo a hectare. This rate provides the ideal baiting points of 40 to 45 a meter squared for optimum efficacy. The maximum total dose for the ferric phosphate is seven kilo a hectare, which can be applied up to 28 kilo a hectare per year. The Gusto iron pellet continues to use Desidro technology as part of the manufacturing process, which has been a large part of the success of the metaldehyde pellet. Desidro technology is a two-stage drying process where the dough-based wet extruded pellet is cut to size before entering into a microwave as the first part of the drying process. This allows the pellet to dry from the inside, mitigating the risk of hard outer shell and soft interior, which is often a cause of rapid breakdown in molluscicide pellets once moisture is present. From the microwave stage, the pellet enters the conventional air drying process, which removes any excess moisture and hardens off the outer shell create a consistent pellet from the inside out. This reduction in moisture from the desidro process also helps reduce the potential for mole formation and assists with the retention of the blue color when used in field. This is shown here in images taken as part of the quality control procedure at the manufacturing plant in Italy. 10 pellets of gusto iron and a leading ferric phosphate were placed in a petri dish with two mil of deionized water being added to the cotton wool. This was then sealed to avoid moisture loss and photos were taken at 0, 7, 10, 14 and 21 days. We can see from this that throughout the duration of the test, gusto iron remains intact with no formation of mold and no loss of color. In comparison, 
the alternate ferric phosphate pellet begins to bleed colour as early as seven days, with formation of mould following soon after. In summary, the Gusto iron pellet has been produced to be everything you liked about Gusto in a ferric phosphate. It contains 2.94% ferric phosphate anhydrous, with the quality you would expect from an Adama molluscicide. With a uniform size and density, excellent spread and ballistic characteristics, the optimum baiting points of 40 to 45 meters squared can be achieved when applied at 5 kilo a hectare. The packaging for the Gusto iron is in a white 20 kilo bag, providing an application of 4 hectares per bag at the recommended rate. Reiteration that the total individual dose for this product is 7 kilo a hectare with a maximum total dose of 28 kilo per year. This applies across a range of agricultural and horticultural crops, which can be found on the product label. Finally, the Desidro technology used on all Adama molluscicides provide confidence that the pellet will be long lasting, mitigate leaching of colour and prevent formation of mould when the pellet is used under UK conditions. Thank you for your time and for watching this short video update. If you'd like more information on our molluscicide products or wider portfolio, don't hesitate to get in touch. The details for your local regional agronomy manager can be found here. Alternatively, visit our website for updates and additional content. Thank you very much. Goodbye.